Illinois' capital city is about an hour and a half drive north of St. Louis and a three hour and 45 minute drive southwest of Chicago. Most people that live in Illinois and nearby states have heard of Springfield and they know that it's the state capital of Illinois. However, many of those same people have never been here since it's a small, medium-sized city that's far away from everywhere else. And well, most people don't have a reason to ever go here. For this video, I drove to Springfield, Illinois, so you don't have to. Well, let's get to it, shall we? I do start the video in Riverton, which is just north of Springfield. Riverton is home to 3,400 residents and has a median household income of $61,000 per year. If you're unfamiliar with my videos, I do speed up my videos in order to show more in a less amount of time, and you can always keep up with the real time that it takes me to drive in the lower left corner of the screen. If I go too fast for you, or if you think that I'm going too slow, you can always adjust the playback speed by clicking the gear icon on PC or by pressing the three dotted menu on a mobile device. Isn't YouTube great? Also really quick, as if you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe as doing all of those things helps these videos out with the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video of an area near you. If you enjoy this video, you might enjoy checking out some of the playlists that are featured on my channel. You might enjoy my USA Medium Sized Cities playlist or my Illinois playlist. As a whole, Sangamon County is home to 194,000 residents, which is down from a 2010 census count of 197,000. The last 10 years saw the first population decline ever recorded in Sangamon County. You know, this goes back to what I've said in nearly all of my Illinois videos, as the state has lost more population than any other since the year 2010. Illinois property taxes are the second highest in the nation only after New Jersey, but unlike New Jersey, Illinois is surrounded on all sides by states that have much lower tax rates. Illinois has also consistently been ranked as one of the least business-friendly states in the country year after year, and those are the reasons why most people believe that Illinois has lost nearly 200,000 people in the last 10 years, which is more than any other state. Some local Illinois residents have gotten mad at me in previous videos for pointing that out, but I think it's pretty telling when you see multiple counties or regions within a state lose population when they had never lost population before. It's funny to me because I'm truly not someone that cares about politics, left or right, but I've been called both an extreme Democrat and an extreme Republican when mentioning this in previous videos. Anyway, the truth is that the elected politicians are the ones who set the tax rates, and the facts are the facts. You can blame the ones right here in Springfield for that. Don't blame me, even though I know that some of you still will. I'm just simply explaining why Illinois has lost so many people for the ones that are curious. We are now officially within the Springfield city limits. Springfield has a population of 114,000 residents and just like Sangamon County, Springfield saw its first ever population loss in the last 10 years, as in the year 2010, Springfield had about 2,000 more residents. The median household income is $51,000 per year and 18% of the residents live in poverty. 34% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher and the median value of owner-occupied housing is $120,000. $3,000. Niche.com ranks the public schools as above average, however both the violent and property crime in Springfield are pretty high. We'll get more into the crime later in the video, but in the meantime, make sure to drop a like for that amazing insight.
We are currently in the far northern part of Springfield as I'm heading towards the Illinois State Fairgrounds. As I turn the corner here, on the left is the Illinois State Fairgrounds. Outside of the Chicago area, Illinois is a huge agricultural state. Just go ahead and sample the water from any river in the state for nasty farm chemicals and you'll catch what I'm saying really quick. Just kidding, sort of. That was kind of a mean joke. Well, moving on, Illinois produces the second most corn in the country after Iowa. Iowa produces 16% of the nation's corn, while Illinois produces 14%. The Illinois State Fairgrounds is the showcase for the state's agriculture and has taken place annually since 1853. Also, I guess the corn dog started being really popular here back in the mid 20th century before it was popular anywhere else. Way to go, Springfield. Currently, I'm taking a lap around the Illinois State Fairgrounds and next I'm going to be heading towards where Abraham Lincoln's body was buried. Most people from Illinois know this, but people that are not from Illinois might not know this. Like many states, Illinois has a few nicknames. It's called the Prairie State, but it's also called the Land of Lincoln. If you ever visit Springfield for the first time, you might come to the assumption that Abraham Lincoln was born here. Everywhere that you go, in downtown and in many spots of the city outside of downtown, you'll see signs pointing towards some kind of memorial in Lincoln's name. Even though Lincoln was born in Kentucky and was raised in Indiana, Lincoln moved to Illinois as an adult and eventually settled in New Salem, which is northwest of Springfield. To this day, Indiana, Illinois, and Kentucky continue to fight over who gets to claim Lincoln. It's like watching kids fighting over who won a game of Uno. Just kidding. Sort of. I mean, that was another mean joke. But in all seriousness, Lincoln is a president worth fighting over, as on January 1st, 1863, Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which abolished slavery. I'll bet you that many of you forgot that one from elementary school. This is the place where you can find where Lincoln was buried. The gates were closed so I couldn't get through. This is one entrance to the Oak Ridge Cemetery and I'll go ahead and swing around to the other side where there's another entrance.
Next, I'll be in downtown Springfield. This is downtown Springfield. On the left is the Abraham Lincoln Museum and the Lincoln Presidential Library. This is the old state capitol building. Springfield is actually the third capital of Illinois. The original was a town that basically no longer exists called Kaskaskia. Stay tuned for that video. The second was Vandalia, also stay tuned for that video. On the right is the Bank of Springfield Center, which is basically Springfield's convention center. Sporting events are held here along with other convention center-like events. On the left is the Lincoln National Historic Site where you can get tours of Lincoln's original Greek Revival home. On the right is a view of the Lincoln Library. I think it goes without saying that straight ahead is the State Capitol Building.
Now it's time to dive into some of the crime problems that the city has. Springfield has a violent crime rate of 833 for every 100,000 residents, which is about two and a half times the national average rate. Springfield, Illinois residents have a 1 in 180 chance of getting assaulted. That's not the worst crime rate out there by any means, but it's still a little high for comfort if you're considering moving to Springfield. The property crime rate is also double the national average. Up ahead I go through one of the more sketchy areas of Springfield, which is a neighborhood just east of downtown called Pioneer. Near Park. As we get closer, you'll notice that there are more and more blighted properties. Definitely not the worst hood that you'll see in Illinois. I mean, you're competing against East St. Louis and Southside Chicago, for that matter. It is pretty small in area, but as you could see, the Pioneer Park neighborhood of Springfield had only a few occupied homes. Much of the neighborhood was abandoned, and you could see that nature has started to take over.
Economically, Springfield does all right for being a medium-sized city in Illinois outside of Chicago. Most of the money comes from the state of Illinois, unsurprisingly, which employs 17,000 workers in the region. After that, it's the Memorial Health System, which employs 5,200. Wow. Steep drop off there. In third place, it's the Hospital Sisters Health System, followed by Springfield Clinic, and then finishing out the top five is the Springfield Public Schools. You have only one employer in the top ten in the region that's an actual company, and that company is Horace Mann Educators Corporation, which employs a little over 1,000. It's a little odd that I chose to talk about the decent economics of the city when I did as I'm going through one of the more rundown areas of the city. In the sports world, by far and away, the most well-known athlete from Springfield is Andre Iguodala, who has won three NBA championships and an NBA Finals MVP with the Golden State Warriors.
Well, that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe as doing all of those things helps these videos out with YouTube algorithm. Also, make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video of an area near you. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out some of the playlists that are featured on my channel. You might enjoy checking out my Illinois playlist and my USA medium-sized city playlist. Also now, I have linked my Instagram and my Twitter to my YouTube so you can go ahead and follow me on those platforms if you would like. I have also started a Patreon account and if you would like to donate to the channel, I would definitely appreciate it as making these videos does cost quite a bit of money at times. Obviously, you don't have to and you can always support the channel by simply watching my videos and liking and possibly sharing. I'm not going to mention my Patreon in every video as I don't necessarily want to shove that in your guys' face, but you can always find the link on my profile. And I do want to thank Alexander Anton for being my first patron on this channel a couple weeks ago. He reached out in a comment on one of my videos and said that I should start one and he went ahead and donated. So a big thank you, Alexander Anton. You didn't have to do that and it's much appreciated. And if anyone else would like to do the same, you can go ahead and check out my Patreon. With that said, we'll see you next time. Peace.